Right, so hello and welcome back to another 90 Day Fiancé video on Arthur TV. So over the past few weeks, we've been following the story of Laura and Aladdin from season one of 90 Day Fiancé The Other Way. Last time out, we looked at the season finale tell-all episode, which was filmed just six weeks after the pair had gotten married in Tunisia. Despite the couple ending their wedding night with a smile on their face, their start to married life could hardly have been worse, with Aladdin revealing they had argued pretty much non-stop since they were pronounced husband and wife. As well as the cultural differences seeming too great for the pair to overcome, Laura revealed she had been having money issues, which had put a significant strain on the relationship. Not only could she no longer help pay the rent, but she also had to tell Aladdin that she could no longer afford to sponsor his 10-year path to Canadian citizenship. With their marriage on the rocks and nothing to suggest things would get any better, Aladdin ended the tell-all by telling Laura he wanted a divorce. Today, we're going to be having a look at everything that's happened since the season came to an end, right up to where the couple are today. First up, we're going to be looking at a double episode of 90 Day Fiancé What Now, a series where couples reveal how their lives have unfolded since their 90 day journey came to an end. After that, we're going to have a look at Laura's appearance on 90 Day Fiancé Self-Quarantined to see where she's living now and find out the most recent news surrounding her marriage and her love life. As we go along, we're going to be covering all the off-screen drama from behind the scenes, and we'll finish off by having a look at everything that's happened between the couple since their time on TV came to an end, including all of the allegations, lies, and dark rumours in what will be our final video on the couple. So first up is the double episode of 90 Day Fiancé What Now? Despite the potential willingness from the couple to work on their marriage after the tell-all, a few months had passed and they had only spoken on two occasions. They had another big fight and once again, Aladdin blocked Laura on all forms of social media. He even locked the iPhone he bought her. I wish to repair the relationship with Aladdin, but I don't know if it's possible. Basically, he's telling me it's over between us. I already started the procedure for divorce. So it looks like that's pretty much it for Laura. She hasn't really got a lot left. Liam's moving back to Canada. She's only got a few weeks until she has to be out of her rental, which is why her whole house is empty. And now she's lost her husband too. Sitting in my empty house makes me feel that I've lost everything. I've lost my husband, my son. I hope so. It's a pretty horrible feeling, to be honest with you. Sorry. Despite being blocked on all forms of social media, Laura wants to try contacting Aladdin one last time before conceding defeat. So she FaceTimes his friend Muhammad in the hopes that she can get through to him. Answers. I need answers from Aladdin. I have my speculations as to why I think Aladdin is divorcing me, but I don't know if I will ever find out the real reason why. Muhammad picked up the phone and they ended up speaking for a little bit. He explained how serious the whole leaving your house without telling your husband was in their culture and then revealed that he was actually with Aladdin, who decided to come to the phone. Hello, Aladdin. Hello. Paladin, can you please handle this maturely and not with so much hate? Listen, listen, don't make like you are the victim here. I'm not making like I'm a victim. We already talked. So for me, it's over. I'm not here to explain you or I know what you do and you know already what you are doing. What, what I did doesn't, it doesn't deserve a divorce, Aladdin. It's a shame the camera crew didn't stick around in Tunisia after the wedding, because I think it would be really interesting to hear Aladdin's side of the story here. We only really heard that Laura was disrespectful, argumentative, and wouldn't change, but I wish we could see in more detail what had actually happened. It's deserved, it's deserved. No, it doesn't. It's a game, you know, for you. You see, I just love, just because you don't care. When I care about you before, you just disrespect me, okay? I still care about you. No, you, you don't. You don't care from the beginning. You know why you call me now? You call me because you don't have where you go. I don't. I don't have a home. I don't care. Whoa. 
I would like you to kind of soften up just a little bit and not be so hard and hateful. Oh, and don't text me anymore. Or don't call me. You. Jesus, this is savage from Aladdin. You're calling me because you don't have anywhere else to go. That's gotta hurt. I'm actually so curious as to whether you guys think that Aladdin's being really harsh here or whether you're wondering why Laura called him in the first place. Sorry. I'm not dealing with somebody who's normal. He has a lot of hate and bitterness, and it hurts so much. It's always quite a sobering scene when you see one of the partners breaking down after the failed relationship. This scene reminds me so much of the end of the Big Ed and Rose saga, where Ed's in the hotel room and he bursts into tears. Like, as entertaining as this show is, you're quite often watching someone set themselves up to ruin a big part of their life. It's crazy how quickly they go from, oh my god, this younger, attractive foreign person who's way out of my league is really interested in me, to, oh my god, they've divorced me and taken half my stuff, leaving me bankrupt, sad and alone. I was gonna say I wish they could see how it turns out right from the start so they could avoid all of this, but they could literally watch any episode of 90 Day Fiancé ever and see the exact same thing. Anyway, with the divorce now being finalised, Laura decides to go see a lawyer. They did explain to me in English that 50% would belong to him and vice versa. So if I signed a contract that said I get 50% of his, do I? Could I? Is there any way I could pursue it or is that just... Unfortunately for Laura, she doesn't have a copy of the contract. Aladdin had also sent three letters to her home address about the divorce, but with no response to any of them, Laura lost any rights she might have had on divorce under the marriage agreement. So I really, I have no rights, really. No. Once Laura realised that she wasn't going to be able to take half of Aladdin's property, she asked if she would at least be able to get her personal belongings back from the apartment. The lawyer said she wouldn't have any right to go onto his property and get them, so she advised Laura to use the divorce papers as leverage and sign them in exchange for getting her items back. After the show ended, apparently she tried, but it didn't work out too well for her. She said, Nobody knows how horrible Aladdin has been to me. You know, everything I own that had meaning and value is in Qatar, and he will not even allow me to get all my valuables from our apartment. Police will not even assist unless I have receipts. I asked TLC, 90 Day Fiancé's production company, to help me, but they also said no. But apparently, this is of her own doing. According to rumours, she's banned from the apartment grounds because she verbally threatened neighbours, was violent with Aladdin, and tried to break everything in the apartment. After the divorce finally went through court, Aladdin was ordered to pay her $30 per month. She says he hasn't actually paid her yet, but she doesn't seem too bothered by it. He can keep his 30 bucks, she said. I think he needs it more than me. Although that was the end of the marriage, it was only the beginning of a bitter feud between the couple. After their breakup was confirmed, some darker rumours started circulating about their relationship. So, a little while before the divorce was finalised, Laura announced on Instagram that she was pregnant. But at 51 years old, the chances of her falling pregnant successfully, especially after such a short period of trying, were pretty low, so people began speculating that she was lying. People began suggesting that it was a desperate last-ditch attempt to save her marriage. Well, soon after, Laura announced that she had had a miscarriage. According to her, the pregnancy was ectopic, meaning the fetus had developed outside of the womb. To add to the growing suspicions that she had lied about the pregnancy, one of her fellow cast members from 90 Day Fiancé, Devon Clegg, said on an Instagram Live that people need to realise that when she came out about her pregnancy, she told us that it was fake. And the lies didn't stop there. Not long after, Laura posted a photo on social media of her with a black eye, accusing Aladdin of causing it. Aladdin responded to the accusations, saying, My jiggy jiggy wasn't enough, but a little birdie said I made a baby. They say I'm responsible for a black eye, but even I know Shimmer Shadow isn't meant for daytime wear. 
And pretty much everyone on social media seemed to agree with Aladdin too. Like every single comment from 90 Day Fiancé viewers that I could find on Instagram, on Reddit, on Twitter, were basically saying the exact same thing. They were saying it's obviously black makeup, there's no swelling, there's no natural black eye colours like purples and greens, and some people even pointed out that it was slightly shimmery. I mean, I personally don't know much about makeup, but those of you that followed me since pre-pandemic know that I box for my county, and I've seen my fair share of black eyes, and this just isn't one of them. In response to all of these pretty disturbing lies, someone came out on Instagram saying that they knew one of Aladdin's friends from Tunisia and spilled loads of tea from behind the scenes. Apparently, after visiting a fertility doctor for a second time, it was determined that she wasn't actually going to be able to come back from menopause like they originally thought. This apparently really got to her and made her feel really insecure and jealous. That was apparently when she lied about the pregnancy, and after realising that she couldn't keep that up for long, she lied about having a miscarriage. On top of that, she also began claiming that Aladdin was cheating on her. He's got inundated by a ton of women, she said. I mean, he was already engaged six months after our tell-all, so in that regard, he wasn't the most faithful man, you know what I mean? Did he sleep with somebody when I travelled to New York City to do my tell-all? Maybe. I don't know. He had a lot of girls there in Africa that were quite interested in him. They all thought he was really rich because of the TV cameras coming to Tunisia to film our second wedding, so he was like the bomb. He actually uploaded a photo of him wearing an engagement ring, and a lady called Maria commented saying, In love with my life and my one true love with an engagement ring emoji. From her Instagram profile, she appears to be Swedish, so maybe he's fallen in love there, or maybe he's looking for a Swedish green card. Who knows? As for Laura, at the end of the What Now episode, she was asked what her plans were now that her and Aladdin had finally split. I would like to travel someplace, live somewhere cheap, and restart life again, and get the joy back in my life that I've recently have lost. So sitting on some beach, with my flip-flops on, my two dogs beside me, kicking it back, having a cold beer. Do you wanna find love? I would like just to do me for a while. I'm pretty good to not look for love. Hearing Laura say that she wants to take some time to focus on herself for a bit was actually quite refreshing. From what Liam says, it sounds like she's just been jumping from one bad relationship to the next, rather than waiting for the right person to come along. I think one of the worst things she could do now she's finally separated from Aladdin would be to make the same mistake all over again, and dive headfirst into another relationship out of lonely desperation. Shortly after the split, Laura moved to Ecuador for a more affordable way of life, and not long after, she appeared on 90 Day Fiancé self-quarantined. But despite saying that she wasn't going to be looking for love anytime soon, good old Laura couldn't resist when another young toy boy came calling. Hi, it's me, Laura. You are not going to believe this, but after the tell-all, Aladdin and I decided to part our own ways, and I ended up here in Ecuador. The crazy thing is, I did actually end up meeting somebody online. We just really connected. Hey, honey. Hey, what's going on, baby? Tony lives in California and is in dental college. He is 25. Oh, for goodness sakes, Laura, not again. Some people just don't learn, hey. I actually worried that Tony is too good to be true. And of course, he was. During a recent talk show appearance, Laura revealed that her and Aladdin are officially divorced and went on to say that she's now single, meaning things with Tony didn't work out. It also looks like she's put herself straight back on the market, saying, if there are any men who want to put a ring on it, I will judge the diamond size and the quality. But yeah, totally. Come on, DM me. Show me the ring. Let's get jiggy with it. I can't believe after all of this, she still hasn't learned her lesson. Despite the unlikely pairing, there were actually points in this season where I thought they might just work out. But in the end, they obviously just weren't right for each other. To be honest, given all the stuff that's come out in this video, I don't think Laura's right for anyone at the moment. She has some serious issues she needs to work on before she starts working on a relationship again, but I just can't see her doing that. 
I feel like this is just one of those tragedies that's inevitable and all you can really do is just sit back and watch it play out. Unfortunately though, this is as far as we're going to watch. With Laura and Aladdin's time on TV finally at an end and all the drama seemingly settled, that brings an end to my coverage of 90 Day Fiancé The Other Way, season one. I'm actually so glad so many of you guys enjoyed embarking on this journey with me, analysing this couple in detail, and I just can't wait for the next one. Now this story's at an end, I'm going to be looking for new couples to cover. So if you have any in mind, feel free to comment them down below and I'll take a look. If you want to make sure you catch that next juicy saga, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. Until then, if you're in the mood for a binge, feel free to check out my other 90 Day Fiancé playlists for all the couples I've covered up until now. As always, the links to my Instagram, Twitter and other social media will be down below. So feel free to come drop me a follow to keep up with the channel, help me decide what future videos to make or just say hi in between uploads. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.